Hey everybody, Asher here, and it's Free Play Friday, where it's today in celebration of it getting an overwhelmingly positive rating on the Steam Store. We're going to be playing Warsim, the Realm of Aslona, which is currently in beta and early access. It's under heavy development. It has been for a very long time by just one person, Mr. Hugh Millward. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this game, get ready for some glorious text-based kingdom building action. This is a game that I wouldn't say really took me by surprise, but it definitely grabbed me and kept me interested last year. So there's never a great time like the present. Ooh, that's not how the saying goes. There's no better time than the present to dive in now and just see, hey, what's this game all about? So let's go ahead and let me just take a little bit to share with you about the game. We're going to be starting a new game here. Now, to do that, you see that we have a bunch of text-based stuff going on here. That includes all of the ASCII art, as it were. This game will run on pretty much anything. In fact, there is a setting where there's actually a really big blind community for people who run this game blind. It just gets rid of the ASCII art and we'll just read the text out to them, which I think is a really cool accessibility option. But here we go. We're just going to go and we could do random races, select race, completely custom game, preset race packs. I think I'm going to do random races, pull from a list of 94,887,852 races to make a unique world. So it's kind of like Dwarf Fortress in this beginning here, where it's going to create the world around for us here. Do you want to leave the races to fill your world completely up to fate, or would you like the chance to select another random lot until you find one you're happy with? So let's take a look at this real quick. Um, how long do you wish your game to run for? Um... Let's just do a 25 year game just because we're doing this here. And we have we have different music options as well. Um, I think we can actually switch between them and the game as well. We have classic theme. If you really want that just in the background the whole time. That's that's pretty loud. We're gonna turn that down just a little bit. Ooh. All right, or the calm theme. I'm a fan of the calm theme. We're gonna go, we're gonna go with that in the background here, or we could go no music. All right, so what do we want to be known as? We could be king, queen, or custom. So enter your preferred title. Uh, I like that they have an option for Steve. So I don't, I don't really have a, a great title other than you'll do. Enter your preferred word for encounters where you're going to be referred to as Lord, Lord, Lady, They. My Lord, my Lady, make sure it fits. Um, I guess we'll say, hey, you. Enter a preferred word for encounters where you're going to be referred to as a Mr. Or Mr. Mrs. Person. You. I guess we don't want to say, hey, hey, you, you. Okay, we'll just do Mr. Because that's a little bit hard to see here. Um, we could do make your own name or make a random name. Let's see what the random generated name is. Alvor, the faraway king, want a different name. Reth, the shadow stone. Daka, Lasson, Bardor, the bold. Um, there's Bork to the puncher. Or Bork Fred. I like that. And do you want to make your own kingdom or have one randomly generated? Obviously, we need to make. We could do Aslona, the default kingdom, but we're going to make our own kingdom name. Uh, we'll call it the Fuzzy Bean Kingdom, because why not? So, difficulty, casual, it's going to be hard to lose, easy. We'll do um, standard just for uh, figuring out here, but just real quick, just so you can see it. The difficulty choices in Warsome get affect the game in many ways. Chiefly, the difficulty affects the resources you are given at the start of the game. For example, casual starts you with 5,000, uh, but only while well, solid only gives you 100. Um, easier difficulties also let your kingdom's laws be easier and set up your starting roads, trade posts, etc. So like I said, this is a text-based kingdom builder. So we're just going to do normal. Um, we could do like insane where it just says you're screwed, but um, we'll just do that. So you're the ruler of the kingdom of Fuzzy Bean, once a great and mighty empire fighting against the great bandit horde of Fenor the Overlord, as well as several minor bandit gangs who pester your lands. The world is vast and complex, and there's much to see and do. Um, I thought we'd have an ability to look at the different races. Maybe we will in a minute. Um, everybody's generating here. We can enter 666 for a secret. That's, um, that's exciting. So you are brought a list of races and peoples that exist in the world. So we have the independent Western nation of Wynn, led by 
this king, uh, Lysidius uh, Setterskin. Um, there's civilization of rotting men. We have dreaded necromancers, pacifist blood vampires, brown gnomes, and hedge gerblings as well. Let's generate a new set of races. So we're going to have to do this generation every time working working my system really hard. We actually have Kingdom 4, the Humphrey Kingdom. So we have, these are uh, led by Mind Zombies, Eastern Shriek Rocks, Deformed uh, Blog Rocky, Dirty Men, and Two-Headed Mask Minotaurs. Let's generate one more time. I mean, there's a, um, another game that I, I guess you can't really call it play that some of the naming conventions this remind me of, which is Progress Quest. If you're familiar with it, that was a old, just idle, leave it running, making fun of EverQuest and some of the stuff that's around here. So we have Nomadic Vampires, Rock Underlings, Roving Lightning Fenrir Form Mages, Minor Evolved Frogs, and Hairless Coast Gilgals. Sounds good to me. Yeah, like I said, it, we're, we're going calm music today because War Sim is just a calm game. I mean, really, you can play whatever you want with it, but um, I don't know. It just it's a, it's a good thing just to turn out the lights and see this sudden red sky here the world is full of mystery and wonder and there are many peoples of this world they are men nomadic vampires rock underlings roving lightning fin reform mages minor evolved frogs hairless coast gill howl ghouls goblins and demons so the annals of history will remember your rise to the throne how did it happen we have lots of options my father was assassinated died of old age was turned mad and jailed. I won the throne in the bet with the previous ruler. I'm a bandit and took the throne with a bandit army. I stole the throne with demonic trickery to serve the overlord. I pulled a fabled sword from a stone. My father is a village elder and inherited the throne by accident. My enslaved forces were able to overthrow the previous ruler. I won the throne at a tournament uh, to find the new ruler by strength. I led a slave revolt and overthrew it, or it's a long story. Or we can leave it up to fate, which is default. Um, I th And some of these do actually have different things that happen at the start, but I don't really remember any of them right now. So I'm gonna do, I won the kingdom in a bet. The previous you'll do had a run the realm into debt and cross paths with you, a wealthy gambler and opportunist. You offered your entire wealth of gold against the title of you'll do with a coin flip. The desperate you'll do took the risk and lost and surrendered the realm to you in a move that became the talk of the realm. So we gain a lot of money from our personal money, uh, Fuzzy Bean's bank vault is empty. Fuzzy Bean has no gold. Minus 15% per, public origin because they don't like me. One third of your soldiers and peasants have deserted. So that's a terrible start. Let's see how it goes. Um, you are invited to the royal crowning ceremony where you can learn of your newly inherited realm. Of course, you are the ruler of this kingdom and can also ignore it. Well, we're going to go to the ceremony. Ready? Ready for the cutscene? There we go. You enter what is now your throne room for the first time. There's a small crowd of people who are gathered to see the new you'll do. As you take a moment to observe the room, the High General of Fuzzy Bean approaches. So General, look at that great face here. He's got a cool General beard. Greetings to you. I hope you're well, my hey you. I shall crown you as the one true you'll do of Fuzzy Bean. You've gained this title through a bet with the previous you'll do, who's now poor and fortuneless. Though many have revolted against your crowning, we as noble servants of the crown must stand behind you. You're now the you'll do of Fuzzy Bean. Long may you reign. I haven't introduced myself very well. I'm Gorman Pinker, your general. I advise you on matters of warfare. And to inform you of the military, I'll now tell you the state of the realms. This is important. Fuzzy Bean's five territorial holdings make us a threat to others. The kingdom's personal army consists of 333 peasant workers, 44 soldiers, and five loyal knights. Now, um, if you've played Kingdom of Dragons Past, knights are similarly important. Uh, and that game is this one. And that They'll go on quests, and they're also really, really valuable elite fighters. Uh, but it kind of stinks that um, a bunch of our army deserted at the start because that's going to make things a little bit harder. But for military matters, for the financial state of the realm, the kingdom's coffers were wiped out by our last king, so there's no gold in our bank. Your 12,500 12, gold in your personal coffers is all we have. Um, 
My Yule do, now that you are crowned, you may speak to Old Kroll if you wish for any tutoring in matters of the realm. If you are unsure what to do, I would highly recommend it, though. If you'd like to discuss it later, you may do it. Let's meet Old Kroll, at least. I know how to play this game, but welcome! And my hey you, and prepare yourself for some good old tutoring! Now, firstly, I must ask how you prefer to me explain these things. I could give you a full explanation with every detail, a fair explanation with less and less relevant detail, or if you wish, a version so simple a mere child could comprehend it. I want the simple version. All right. Explore menu. Do things. You win. All right. I can get behind that. Top menu. Show gold. Show lands. Is help. Hire men. Fight men. You win. Um. Let's let's go. Let's just go through all these. This is this is a uh, fun. Um. We want more tutoring. Um, hire mercs, kill enemies, you win. Uh, hire staff, staff work, you win. Make friends, friends trade, you win. Make laws, imprison everyone. Hey, hold on a second. Um, buy buildings, use them, you win. Hire steward, ignore throne room, you win. Now hang on. Um, bet gold, your guy wins, you win. From the local fighting pit. Store gold, savings grow, you win. Visit other buildings, build buildings, visit them, you win. Kingdom reports, read reports, understand more, you win. And then explore the realm, explore land, discover all, you win. Um, and turn, invade enemy, you win. So we're going to leave the tutorial. Um, all right, well, my hey you, that's everything. Would you like to review any of the areas again? Nope. All right. So this is, this is the kingdom screen. You literally have, um, we have all of my money in here. We don't have a lot of people. We have 25 years to possibly win this game. Um, I have played longer games than 25 years, but 25 years is a good time for getting your feet wet. So there's a lot of different things you could do. We could go to number one here, and you see we have hiring soldiers, selling soldiers, recruiting upgrades, troop wages. We could see what kind of units are available. Peasants cost 14. Um, soldiers, local fort, cost uh, 61. And these prices change per turn. Knights are fairly cheap. Bandits, um, hiring bandits from your prison. That doesn't seem terrible. Hire tribal goblins for the local goblin slaver. I'm not a fan of slavery, and I know there's um, that's, that's like the most basic thing to say, but I say that because I've played Crusader Kings as well, and I've played Stellaris, and I've played a lot of games that allow you to enslave people as part of like whatever you're role playing something i just i just don't do it i just can't that's that's the line i won't cross so sorry i will happily free slaves though um so let's go exit here um we could hire some mercenary companies um we do have a few available we can actually afford all of these the problem is the cost per year and we don't really need them yet um manage staff and champions now we have Old Kroll, the head diplomat. We don't have a spy master. We don't have a court gesture. We do have a general, which is okay. We don't have champions. I do want some champions. So let's go through. Let's go through this part first. Um, we need a spy master. Three potential spy masters are sent to your court. You may speak with each of them and learn what skills and abilities they have. So let's start with uh, the one who smells, Cyrodiil. All right, greetings. My name is Cyrodiil, the one who smells. I have been spying contracts for guildmasters before. There's no doubt I shall work for you. I beg for employment of 12, uh, 125 gold per year. Um, let's see who the other one is. Scrally and the Brainless. Hello, my name is Scrally and the Brainless. I'm an expert in the art of spying. It would be a great honor to serve you. Uh, 210 gold per year. Um, Mord the Courtesan. I'm Mord the Courtesan. I'm really good at hide and seek. I was born ready to do this. I beg for your payment of 114 gold per year. Now, you see the skill level on the right. You don't always pay more to get better skill level. Like you see that the one who smells cost is cheaper, but is better than other people. We're gonna get Seer at all, so that's exciting. We want we want our uh, court here. Court jester. Let's see who's here. Um, three potential court jesters: Garland, the haggard warlock. My father is one of the greatest comedians in the realm, and I specialize in riddles. Please hire me. It was prophesied by ancient text. I expect to make 40 gold per year. Um, Amethma, uh, 
The waste of air. <laughs> I am highly regarded by kings and queens in the realm for my work as I specialize in riddles. I will brighten your court to have one such as me in your presence. I expect payment for uh, 100 or 78 gold per year. And I just want to say real quick that the text normally does wrap around okay. I think this is because I adjusted my window size because I'm recording here at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Um, so that may not be like the best here. But you can see we um, as we talk to these people we get some different information um i'm as funny as an egg on fire and i specialize in non-orc jokes please hire me i'm very poor right now i expect 27 gold per year so i think we end up taking the haggard warlock who gives riddles as well um steward we're not going to hire a steward yet i think um stewards here I'm going to be real with you. Send away any of those other swines who seek this job. I'm the only worthy candidate. I'm excellent in matters of stewardship and won't let you down. So I was raised with the goblin tribe. Just thought you should know. It improved your kingdom to have me at your side. I expect to pay of 109 gold per year. Um, so he's a goblin friend. Uh, my most recent superiors left a positive reviews. 10 to 10 would hire a steward again. Unmatched was great. Uh, was a great help. I bet no one could beat that. Well... We need big armies. I'll use the throne room as a recruitment base. I'd be a source of great pride for your work, and I need 171 per year. Um, so military base, and then Clappa the Proud Jarl. I was once considered one of the greater stewards of the land, and I will care for the lower class of people. I make your enemies bow to your might. I beg for payment of this. So those are, those are all pretty good, but we're not going to hire a steward right now. As for champions, we have... Um, we have all of these people who can come in as champions. Um, I believe we can also have um, some knights come in and do that as well. well. We'll figure that out in a second because it has been a little while since I played. But the, you see champions do cost a little bit more money. And while we do start with a lot of money, that, that can potentially go here in just a minute. So we do have the Grand Arena, Royal Bank, other buildings, Kingdom Reports explore the lands let's go ahead and explore real quick because that's one of the neat things about this game is that you have your base kingdom and you have areas you can explore you can go north east west or south some things um always kind of appear in one direction but lots of it's random so let's go north oh well we don't press in for north this is an oregon trail the near north is a cold as the near north is a cold place filled with uh, though mild compared to the rest of the north the place is filled with forts in places of violence, such as a brawler's pit and a thick blood tavern. Okay, so we're going to do an exploration here. Um, so we found the Slaver's Fort. I don't really want to visit the Slaver's Fort, but let's at least take a look. You arrive here, there are many men and slaves here. The fort is guarded by an army of slavers and slave soldiers. All around you see rich merchants and petty lords bargaining for slaves. So I could buy people. I could buy soldiers. Um, I could potentially attack them and overtake them. But we're not we're not going to deal with that here. Hmm. You encounter a little wagon. This is from exploring again. You encounter a little wagon carrying various goods. The wagon master, who identifies himself at, only as Wagon Man, recognizes his bows. He re he requests a trade agreement with you. Trade agreements are good. They will build you up over time. So it's really lucky that we got one early. And then we got the black market that's full of bandits. The black market is filled to brim with people of all shapes and sizes. Uh, you notice bandits, traders, farmers. Poor folk, mercenaries, workers, and everything in between, streaming in and out of six directions. All this under the watchful eye of the local bandit army, under command of the king of the black market, uh, Stapa of the Horde. So I'm not going to bother with um, a lot of these right now. We're definitely not going to attack the black market. But you get three explorations per turn. Um, I, yeah, I have no more chances to explore. So we went to two areas and we had one random encounter. Now, where you spend most of the time in this game is to go to seven. That's visiting the throne room. Your throne room, uh, here you can deal with visitors from across your realm and beyond. As time goes on, you may find a number of visitors swelling as huge lines. As ruler, you may choose to deal with every last visitor, but if your task becomes too monotonous, you should look into hiring a steward. Stewards will deal with any visitors left unseen by you at the end of the turn, which is not why I'm not too high on hiring a steward, especially for here. But I prefer to try and see everybody through. Be careful, 
Who you hire to be your steward, though, stewards can have one of a number of different traits that affect how they manage to deal with a room of visitors. The traits are xenophobe, they'll be unfavorable to non-humans, dungeoneer, they will imprison most throne room visitors, kind-hearted, they will always act with kindness, military, they will always recruit hireable visitors, goblin friend, they will always be nice to goblins, and money grubber, they will never spend any money. So, we have 25 people waiting for us. Um, and we do have some options to upgrade the throne room. Um, we can set the rules for who we want to have visit the throne room. We can call a council meeting for the fuzzy room. Let's send in the next visitor first. Here we go. You're visited by a drunk stable hand who wants to join your army to avenge his father who died recently. Cool. Now we can send him to the dungeons. And we do have a <laughs> reputation that, um, yeah, there we go. He, uh, he laughs and says, thank you, you're the best, and then jogs out to collect his equipment. So we got plus one peasant. Peasants do count as uh, your soldiers here. So you're visited by an old man who's collecting money for his village after their crops have failed. He seems desperate. So we could give him 51 gold, 510 gold, or we can send him to the dungeons. Or give him nothing. Or give him 51 gold. Um, thank you. I'm sorry for bothering you. I, I know it can be hard dealing with us low folk, but it really means a lot. So we gave him 51 gold. We didn't actually get a public opinion bonus, which I was kind of hoping for there. But you're visited by an old man who asks if you could spare a few coins as the man's dog is starving and there is no game in the wild. Let's give him 20 coins. All right. Yes, he says with a bald fist, a big grin, and runs out of your court. So my kindness is not being recorded, rewarded by the public, so maybe I shouldn't be giving away all of my money to people. A shady man arrives in your court and invites you to play a coin flip game. He tells you it will cost you 10 coins for play. If you can uh, call heads or tails, the coin is flipped, and if you are correct, you win double your bets. He has 190 gold to bet. Let's call heads. Okay, we land on heads and win. Um, so we could currently, uh, double our money. Let's call heads again. Tails, you lose. Call tails. There we go. Um, we could force him to give all of our money and put him in the dungeon, but that's man, but that's, that's shady man. So you're visited by a traveling bard. He has to play a song for you on his loot. I'm a decent musician. Um, before we listen to his song, um, let's, um, uh, we could throw them in the dungeons if we wanted to. But I hail from the Guild of Musicians of the West. The Guild is said to be a true home of music, through, uh, though true, it is not the only source of it. Uh, certainly the loudest. I spend my time away from the Guild traveling and honing my craft. Let's listen to a song. Um, the bard nods and prepares to play a tune. So we get plus one relation with the Musicians Guild. Get ready for some great music here. Just there we go. Two strums. That was a great performance. That was such a great performance. Pay him a bonus. Um, we'll say that was a great performance. Hooray! And he leaves. Um, oh, we could ask him to play again. There we go. Just one strum. That was such a great performance again. Um, we'll let him leave. All right, next up, 20 people. You're visited by an old man who says someone stole his food. He has nothing left and is starving. He begs for a few coins. Let's give him seven coins. Um, he smiles and said, thank you. I heard rumors of your power and grace. I see they were only slightly exaggerated. Um, you're visited by an old man who asked if you could spare a few coins. His family had to resort to eating their family. Everybody's eating their damn dog. All right, blessed is the name Borkfred the Puncher. Thank you. Um, another person with a coin flip game. Not really interested in that. 17, you're visited by an armed man who says he'll serve your army for a fee of 13 gold. That's fine. A little more than maybe I'd like to pay for one soldier, but that's okay. You're visited by a nomadic vampire from the communities of the nomadic vampires carrying the message that Master Sabian Dragonborn wishes you to take part in trade with him and open up a trade route. I would absolutely love to open up a trade ground with some or trade route with some nomadic vampires. As you can see, the little pixel art right up here is a very, very cool. Okay, so we have plus three relations with the nomadic vampires. You now have a trade route with them. Which, if we go ahead and exit out of here, um, let's go to Diplomacy. Um, right now, our head diplomat's not uh, smart enough to talk to some people. Um, that's not what I wanted, is it? Okay, Independent Territories. We have the Communities of the Nomadic Vampires. And you can see we have uh, Trade and Diplomacy through here. 
Um, we have a trade deal with them, which is really exciting. Um, but yeah, we have all of our uh, names, numbers here. We could try to declare war and take some of their territories and stuff, but I'd rather not. We have uh, the Rock Underlings Chiefdom. Uh, their High Chief Maddox, the Lost High Chief, their relationship is four. Um, we could try to arrange a trade arrangement with them as well. And we did! We now have plus 16 uh, relations with them, so you currently have a trade deal, which is cool. Um, we could send a gift of gold as well. Um, the Runic uh, Legation, who are independent, they're at war with us. They don't really like us. They have 800 units and some wealth. They are roving lightning fear and reform mages. And if we look at the kingdom information, um, they're made up of 800 troops and is led by this known for their large wolf-like appearance and their great speed and pack like mind. They are magic using beings who have mastered switching into different form and have built a society around it as people rove across the lands in search of temporary settlement as people worship lightning. They're a civilized group and their famed words are masked greed. Um, their relations with other factions. They get along with some people. They get along with the bandits and cruts. Uh, they get along with themselves by 100. That's exciting. Um, so if we hit, not 9, 0. Um, yeah, some of, the, some of these independent kingdoms are going to be exactly what we want to... Or that's King Rotfinger, the sewage drinker. We love him. Um... We'll, we'll deal with those later, because we don't need to deal with those yet. Um, while I'm here, though, we can go to Kingdom Upgrades, because we do have some money. Military buildings, productivity buildings, arena buildings, recruitment buildings, income buildings. Let's see what our income buildings is. We can do a little tax office. We can do tribute collection box. Earn income from prisoners. Let's, let's build that. Plus five bonus to all tributes. We can make it a little bit bigger if we want to. Recruitment buildings... Uh, we could put a goblin hut to have goblins get a chance to join us. Um, nobility post, 1 in 20 chance of recruiting a knight. That's that's kind of just worth it in general. We could actually upgrade that a little bit more if we wanted to, but we're not. Um, on longer games, that can pay out really well. Because you, you want more knights. Um, arena buildings. Grand champions quarters. Not That's, that's all too rich. Um, productivity buildings. Dirt roads. That costs a lot, but it might be worth it. Guild and order buildings. We can't afford any of that right now. Um, militia. Old weapon stash. We get plus 10 uh, battle score per unit. We'll, we'll get into a fight here in a little bit. Recruitment signs. I think this is where we're going to want to drop some of our early money. Especially because we uh, lost people before. So slightly less people visiting to join you in the throne room. Um... Seven militia signs, more recruits each turn. So, and um, we do want to put up a weapon stash as well. I know we're digging into our money a little bit, but all of these, all of these upgrades do matter, which is nice that all these systems are kind of interconnected. Um, throne room. We have 15 people. Next visitor. Shady Man arrives and he wants to do another coin flip game. It's a little annoying that we keep getting the same game. Your visitor by the jester son who says, Hello, hey you. I've come to read you a joke on behalf of my father who's too sick to come. He says he wishes his uh, material to make you laugh before he dies. So, let's listen to the joke. What do you call a knight that slithers and has scales? Serpent. Nice. Seems to be awaiting your joke. That was a good joke. That was a good enough joke to be paid. The jester son smiles and said, you're too kind, and hey you, this is greatly appreciated. Next visitor, you're visited by a merchant who says one of his shop assistants is set to be executed on your, in your prison, and he begs you to free him and offers you a hundred gold to do so. So we could free the man for a hundred, we could refuse to free him, or we can put him in the dungeons. We'll free the man, we'll take his money. Um, the man kneels and says thank you before getting up and leaving. Sometimes freeing prisoners like that can decrease your public opinion, so it's a little bit dicey. You're visited by a man leading a party of 107 men. He offers to join you for the low price of um, 1,605 gold as the boys are in dire need of work. Um, I see if I want to negotiate with him. I will pay you less, 10 gold per head. Um... And the men seem disgruntled, but they do not argue with you. They take the payment and head off to your army. So just like that, we uh, paid and got a little bit more troops here. Like if we look over here, hiring units, 
soldiers, that was still, that would have been a good bargain either way. Um, because we got 10 people per head, but they were desperate for work. So we'll, we'll take that to our advantage here. I may, I may want to hire some knights, but we'll, um, we'll, we'll do something else with that in just a minute. Uh, back to the throne room. Next visitor. You're visited by an old man who's collecting money for his village after their crops failed. He seems desperate. Let's give him 62 money. Rumors over kindness have finally spread. We increase our public opinion up to 21. Nice. So we have some people still here. You're visited by a mad peasant who shouts, You're the one who stole my soul. I can see it in your eyes. So we can kill him for his impudence. I stole nothing to the dungeons with him or remove him from the court. I think I'm going to throw him in the dungeons. Rumors of your cruelty spread, and we get plus one prisoner. So just like that, public opinion back down. A traveling game master uh, visits your court and invites you to play a popular tavern game called Sudden Death. He says that the game costs 20 gold per play, and the prize is double the 20 gold. He says he plays with northern rules. I don't know what that means. So how to play Southern Death. Player chooses to first, uh, go first, rolls three dice, and whichever dice land on a six are removed from play. At each turn, the active player must get at least one six to remain in the game. A player who does not get a six loses. The player clears all the dice. On his turn, he wins. Let's play the game. The game master flips a coin. It lands on tails. You go first. Um, it's my turn. Round one, three dice to roll. And uh, we got a one, a one, and uh, you did not get a six on your roll. You lose. Let's play it again. Um, roll the dice. We get a six is removed from play. So we, we ended up getting so there. The game is currently in round two and there are two dice remaining. It's the game master's turn. So he got a six. This is a, this is a problematic because we're going to play this one more time. It's the game master's turn and he loses. So I got 40 gold. We'll play again. We like, we like games here and, uh, I'm losing all my money. So, but that's fine. Um, I don't want to play anymore, but he got some money from us, so that's fine. You ask your guards to bring forward a man who is accused of pickpocketing. You can ask him to explain himself, execute him, release him. Uh, Four told me your lands were weak, and he was right. Ask the arresting guard for a statement. Your guard informs you, I'm confident I am confident he is guilty, my hey you. So, we can just throw him in the dungeons. It is believed the man was guilty, so we got a prisoner and we got an increase in public opinion. Seven people waiting for us. You are visited by a farmer who says, A dispute needs to be settled. My neighbor's son climbed over a fence and punched my son in the face. I wanted to beat him back, but his father is far stronger and I and encourages this behavior. There are, however, none stronger than you, so I have come helping for you to solve this matter. Warn the neighbor that if this happens again, he'll be jailed. Your son is weak, just like you. I won't help her to the dungeons with him. I, I kind of don't want people hopping over fences, punching people. So that's uh, we'll we'll help there. Um, you're visited by an old man who's collecting money for his village after their crops has failed. He's also desperate. Um, so we're we're giving our kingdoms money away. You're visited by a trader who wants to join your army because he is told to do so in a dream. Okay, I'll take an extra peasant. That's fine. Um, you're visited by a man who identifies himself a member of the Camp of Love, a hub of kindness located far to the west at Songwood. He smiles at you and nods and greets you before offering you some counsel. You are important and special. Well, thank you. Three people left. You're visited by an insane townsman who shouts, everyone is fake except me. I'm the only real person here. Everyone else is in my head. Um, well, if we were, if we were in your head, we wouldn't be able to kill him or be gone full before you cease to be. Let's just remove him from the court. All right. We're not going to kill anybody as we stand. If we were trying to summon demons, we totally could. Um, let's see. We currently have a, a visit by a bard who claims one of your soldiers chopped down his apple tree and made off with the contents. Six gold is very cheap for repairing an apple tree. We have a lone visitor waiting. Uh, old man wants to know if I could spare a few coins. Sure. That's fine. So there's no one here. Um, we could set the rules for how we want to have uh, visitors here. 
we could go ahead and call the council here. Your head diplomat walks in tired and takes a seat. Your spy master enters briskly and quickly sits. Look at all these chair pushing here. Your jester gargling the haggard warlock walks in looking tired and takes a seat. Your high general arrives and kneels before you taking a seat. This is your first council meeting and your council is held. Meetings are a tool for you to discuss various topics with the staff. Um, so ask questions about finances and harvest. Um, what sources of income should I look at, at next? Conquer more lands, says the High General. Slavery is a good way to make money, says the Spy Master. Court Jester says, rumor has it, he who grows the blue fruit shall be ever wealthy. Maybe we'll see blue fruit. That's pretty important. Truce with bandits or hostile groups. This will save you from losing gold, at least. Um, if I say I want more trade... Not something I can advise on. Speak to other kingdoms. They should trade with you. Trade. Can't think of anything. Trade deals with small villages like Small Haven and Rim may help. Okay, so that's kind of what the council does here. Um, let's just let's just go this way now. Um, we're just going to end the meeting. All right. So while we're here, let's go ahead and uh, change the laws of the land. Um recruiting and training might be want free enlistment active declare forceful enlistment declare no enlistment ban local militia cease peasant training we won't do any of that goblin policies we're going to ban goblin slavery all right so the scribe notes in your demands on a scroll 33 goblins have come to serve you out of gratitude all goblin factions like you now and we get better public opinion so that's good um Mercenary policies. Um, not going to worry about that. Social policy, on alms for the poor. Hire the love cult to increase public order. We have no slaves to free. Um, seven. Let's declare a new celebration, and we will call this... Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of different ways here. Uh, Fuzzy Bean Festival. And we will throw it every two years. No, we'll do it every three years. Um, I'll have parades. We'll have a large royal ceremony. And we'll have burning celebratory fires. All right, so that'll make, that'll make people happy. Taxes and subsidies. We can increase taxes here, but I'm not really going to do that now. Um, what else haven't we been to? We can manage our staff and champions... Um, it used to be, I thought, that you could have um, people kind of fight to be champions. Let's try to anoint a knight for the position of champion here. Uh, you call forward one of your loyal knights and bows to you. It is customary for a knight to complete a trial for becoming a champion. Um, let's order a trial. So we could have him climb the top of a mountain to retrieve a stone. We could find an artifact or we can get win a combat trial. For this let's do the combat trial the knight is brought forward and explained his quest he must fight with a random champion to become a champion look at this so they're fighting right in the uh throne room here sir garth the dungeon delving lands a punch to the opponent old die the levy knight lands a punch on the opponent so they're literally just having a punch fight we could be here a little while I don't even know who, who I'm trying to get to be a knight here. But if it's old die, it's going to be a problem. Oh, wow, actually. Um, touches the opponent with a wide swing. So, yeah, they're they're just punching away. Old die is uh, in trouble. For sure. All right. Uh, the fighting is finally over. The winner of the fight is Sir Garth the Dungeon Delving. The knight has lost the fight but still lives. He returns to your service in shame. So, we don't have a champion. Let's try it. You've already annoyed a knight for this year. Um, we're not going to... We're going to try that again next year. It's just kind of some hard luck. Um, and then if we recruit some troops, if we hire some units... Let's hire some knights. Let's hire five. And then let's hire some soldiers. You know what? No, let's hire some bandits. Um, we have 52 and then let's hire and see we have uh, these these all just count as men's at this point um, that's not a great price so let's hire 50 of them and look at that we're down to 3,000 gold that's fine 
All right. Now, if we go to the um, kingdom reports, well, let's see here. We have the throne room. We haven't even been to the grand arena yet. Um, the grand arena is one of the core parts of your society. Here, warriors battle is local to pay. There's an entry fee to watch it. Let's bet on a fight. Um, the grand champion is Sir Olden uh, Clemerson. Um, but that's cool. Let's bet on a fight. So we pay 22 here. We have Nomadic uh, Vampire Bloodlord or Heroic Bandit Warlord. Let's go for the vampires. They're our buddies. How much gold do we want to bet? Let's bet 100 because that's fun. The screams of the crowd echo as we get flashing here all around as the fighters emerge. They stride closer as the horns blow and the crowd roars. So we, I, we somehow accidentally skipped all that. Um, the heroic banded warlord is defeated, fortunately, after a dazzling strike by the um, just back and forth. Fantastic strikes, dazzling strikes. Um, we got 150 gold from our bet. Let's bet on another fight. 22 gold, a heroic nomadic thrall, or an ivy gray cloaks bandit. I think the gray cloaks bandit will be good here. Let's bet um, 150. Um, the opponents pop out of here again, and um, we won again. So apparently I'm hitting spacebar and kipping, skipping the little text blurbs there, but the crowd roars as um, the ivy gray cloaks bandit gets a very good hit and knocks him down. So we made money. Not, not a ton of money. Um, Kingdom reports also... Um, we don't have any new reports here. But we can view our troop count. Uh, we have mostly peasants, some soldiers, some bandits, some knights, some slaves. Oh, we shouldn't have any slaves. Um, but yeah, what's the status of our questing knights? I don't think we've sent any knights on a quest. Um, yeah, they, they will come to the throne room and ask for a quest sometimes, or if we try to annoy the knight, we can force them to go on a quest, but kind of like Kingdom of Dragons Pass, you try to do that and, uh, they end up running around here. All right, so let's go ahead and I don't think we have too much extra here to do other, and let's just end the year. It's time for the Royal Gathering, which has come around to the Fuzzy Beam Festival celebration, however, cannot afford it as the event will cost the crown gold what oh no we we actually went broke with um how much it costs so sounds really loud now we can choose to attack somebody that we're at war with um let's attack 14 that should be fine um and we can skirmish raid or invade um, let's just skirmish with the least chance of casualties. Or no, we can try to raid. That's fun. Um, send everyone but my peasants. Is fine. A raid will cut down their numbers and gain us some gold. And we'll put it to better use than they've done. So your men arrive at Sargoth's territory. And this is... this is, I'm going to have to turn this down just a little bit here. Um, your men arrive. You spot a strange buildings that adorn the territory and forces emerge and the battle begins. So, just like that, they lost 148, we lost 47, we have 251 men remaining, and we loot 724 gold. Cool! Alright, so we can uh, read through the simple report, or the advanced report. So, oh my god, um, we were robbed, bandits pillaged 200, or 2000 plus gold. Um, our fuzzy beam festival parade cost money here. Um, the, com the people are joyous for that spy reports, bandits enlisted a bunch of new things. The battle reports, we raided the lands of Sargot and we made them a little bit weaker. Our treasury has increased by 265 gold. Cool. So see, we have, we have a little bit more money now, but that's kind of the gameplay loop. Warsim is a fun, interesting game that's all about managing a kingdom, but you can do it your way. Like I said, the way the way that I play it is just a little bit different than maybe anybody else, but the freedom of choice and the freedom to kind of do what you want here is if you just want to make the public hate you, the public can hate you. If you want to jail or execute everybody and try to summon a demon, 
you can do that too. The possibilities are all out there. The developer for this game is great and puts a lot of work into it. I definitely recommend it. Um, it has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam for really good measure. And the reason uh, we have a celebration for that is that it just recently got enough reviews to be upgraded to that threshold in case you didn't know how Steam works. But that's it for now. This is Asher. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. That's Free Play Friday for this week, and we will do this again soon. Take care.